Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who is here to break down the players coming out of Week 14 whose stock are rising. What's going on, Jim? I'm pretty good, Greg, because it was a fun week 14. There were uh, like four or five different mid-range running backs who all became either relevant or more relevant from where they were previously. Cam Akers, Jonathan Taylor, Miles Sanders, Alvin Kamara kind of back. Uh, maybe we get Drew Brees back in week 15 too. So it's always good to have more options at our disposal from a running back perspective. You could put Ronald Jones in that discussion as well. There were a lot of positive changes in giving us more choices in DFS, and I will take that every single time I have the chance to do so. So will I. You know, the, this list that we have in front of us today, if you would have asked us back in August, like, who are the players that could be league winners for you? These three players may have all been on that list, and it's crazy the road that we took to get here, but we are now here in the fantasy semifinals, in that final stretch with DFS. You're there. And it begins with Jonathan Taylor, whose stock rose and fell and rose and fell. And yesterday, he had 65 yards on the first drive in the first quarter. And I'm like, this is going to be the day we've been waiting for. Then basically didn't play in the second quarter because it was all about Naheem Hines. And I was livid. So much so, I got a text message from one of my partners who was like, I hate the Colts. As he texts that message to me. 62 yards later, Jonathan Taylor scampers into the end zone, and the rest was history. Jonathan Taylor finished with close to 30 FanDuel points yesterday, and the stock finally rising for the top pick for the Colts. It is rising right before a matchup with the Houston Texans. So here we go, Greg. Arrows up on Jonathan Taylor in a big way. And at some point, when a player is effective, you kind of have to commit to them. And we haven't seen the Colts fully do that yet with Jonathan Taylor, but it doesn't matter. He's getting enough volume where with how good he is, he's paying off consistently now with that volume. He's had at least 114 yards from scrimmage and now three consecutive games that he has played. He had a buck 65 yards from scrimmage on Sunday. So he's being effective and we're seeing increases in his, his workload as a result of that. That doesn't mean it's perfect, obviously, because like you said, Naheem Hines is still mixing in. He's still not getting all the red zone work. So there's still some flaws in Jonathan Taylor's game, but we're already getting production from him at this current volume. If they were to increase that volume, which they could because of how well he's playing, he could go totally nuclear. And I think that's within the range of outcomes here. So I think that what we've got here with Jonathan Taylor is a player who is still slightly flawed, but is a very relevant piece for DFS, a piece we can use, I think, fairly aggressively and feel really good about. And that's where he's at right now. But there's also the potential for that role to get even better if they do decide to cut down the roles for Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins. And honestly, like, that's very possible with how well Taylor is playing. So right now we can view him as still being a little bit flawed, but with room to grow. And I think that is definitely intriguing to me. Again, Houston on the docket next week. You don't need 30 carries to go off against Houston. So I think that Jonathan Taylor, even if his role does not expand right away, still is someone we want to buy aggressively with where his role is at right now. Jonathan Taylor coming out of Wisconsin, we thought could be the most effective rookie running back. And yesterday he was just that. And there's more opportunities out there for him. That's the exciting part. That's why his stock isn't just up, but it's rising, especially with a date against the Houston Texans on tap for week 15. But if you didn't like Jonathan Taylor as the potential top rookie running back on the board, maybe you were a Cam Akers fan. And finally, Cam Akers broke out as well. He had over 20 FanDuel points on Thursday night against the New England Patriots. And Sean McVay, we talked about it last week, he finally committed, right? He finally gave it to Cam Akers and said, you're my guy. Going away from Daryl Henderson for the most part, going away from Malcolm Brown for the most part. It was all Cam Akers. And it's exciting if you waited and waited on this rookie running back. Yeah, we had Akers on the show last week, too. And what we said at the time was buy Cam Akers cautiously because there was still this chance that Sean McVay might not fully commit to him. He wasn't getting some targets. And someone on Twitter was like, buy him cautiously, you fish. And hey, Twitter person, you're right. I was a fish. Like, we should have been buying aggressively here with Cam Akers. And it paid off big time on Thursday. He had 29 carries in that game. He had three targets. Again, as I said, just four targets the entire year before that. That was a really good role for Cam Akers there while playing 79% of the snaps. That is an awesome workload. 
But it's also a team where we want to buy into the volume because the Rams have a tremendous defense. They are an efficient offense. We combine those two things. The running back volume on that team is even more valuable than what you get for either team for other teams. So Cam Akers, we can get rid of the cautious label. Be aggressive now in buying into Cam Akers. And the salary change for Cam Akers was not aggressive. For week number 15 against the freaking Jets, he is $6,700 on FanDuel. And we're going to be pretty heavy on Cam Akers there. We do want to target running backs and tight game scripts, so we're probably not going to be getting targets on Cam Akers late in the game. But as he showed on Thursday, he doesn't need that. He had 20 FanDuel points without a touchdown, which is really, really hard to do unless you're Austin Eckler. And, and Cam Akers did it. So I think we can now, you know, just put take down all of our guards, take down our walls, let Cam Akers into our life, and feel really good about this backfield for the first time all year, buying Cam Akers uh, as, as much as we can right now. Take that caution and throw it to the wind, Jim, because Cam Akers is our guy facing again off against the freaking Jets this weekend. Akers, led by Sean McVay, will be rolling into the end zone, along with picking up all of those yards, just like he did last week against another AFC East foe. Cam Akers and the Rams, certainly someone whose stock is rising and hopefully will lead you to a fantasy championship. And I was hoping this last player we'd chat about would be another rookie running back to just kind of fill it out for us. But Clyde Edwards-Alaire, stock's not really rising. Same with DeAndre Swift. And then you get to J.K. Dobbins and, and who knows. So instead, we'll go with another young running back whose stock soared yesterday with Jalen Hurts as the quarterback. And that was Miles Sanders. Sanders had over 27 Vandal points and had another 70-yard run. I believe it was his third of the season. Now, people who questioned Miles Sanders, I know some people that not only didn't play him in DFS, they had him on their bench in season long yesterday because they didn't like the matchup and who knew with the quarterback. They faced a great Saints defense, and Miles Sanders still went off. Jalen Hurts has seemingly changed everything for Sanders, which is one of the reasons why his stock is rising. Yeah, I think being low on Sanders heading into week 14 was justified and correct because in the three games before that, he had a pretty bad role. He was not getting yardage. His snap rate was around 60%. And like when you're running behind a bad offensive line with bad offensive weapons against a tough defense, it's hard to have a lot of faith in that. But his role changed dramatically in week 14. His snap rate shot up 20 percentage points from where it was in his previous three games. It was around 80% this time. 14 carries and five targets. Now, the effectiveness has been there all year long. Even when Carson Wentz was in there and he was struggling, Miles Sanders, when he got the ball, was running really well. The problem is they didn't give him the ball. For whatever reason, they wanted to keep on dropping back, throwing as much as possible, and they wouldn't commit to Miles Sanders being the focal point of this offense, which normally you should not do, to be fair. But, like, the passing game was struggling. Miles Sanders was being good, but they wouldn't give him the ball. Now with Jalen Hurts, they're more willing to run the football, and they're more willing to have Sanders be the focal point there. We know that with running quarterbacks, it opens more rushing lanes for the running back. That's a good thing for Miles Sanders. Not that he needs the increase in efficiency, but if it leads to more volume as well, it's really hard not to get excited. Now, with Sanders, there are still some downsides. This offensive line is really, really bad. The pass catchers are really, really bad. Jalen Hurts definitely did open things up, but we only have one game of sample on him. He exceeded my expectations. I feel really good about what Jalen Hurts did on Sunday, but it's still just one game. We can't overreact to just one game. So it's not as if Miles Sanders suddenly has a perfect profile, but if we get an 80% snap rate out of a guy who has talent and is playing with a quarterback who will open up rushing lanes for him, that's pretty valuable. So right now I would say bump Miles Sanders up, but if we continue to get more games with Jalen Hurts being effective as a quarterback of the Eagles, he will shoot up even more. So increasing the stock on Miles Sanders with the potential for it to increase even more, I think that's a good, a good blend for him as they head out to Arizona for this weekend. Miles Sanders has the talent, no doubt. And now that he's healthy with a quarterback and an offense that kind of fits his skill set a bit better, it's a good spot to have his stock rising for the rest of the season. He's going to put himself on the map for drafts in 2021, but hopefully he'll win owners' championships if they're still alive here in their fantasy playoffs. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time. Enjoy Monday Night Football. I will, Greg. Should be a pretty fun game tonight. We get a Thursday game to Saturday games, a three-game Thursday through Saturday slate. So I'm pretty pumped about this week as a whole. Should be a fun one for sure. 
Yeah, you know, yesterday's window was kind of weird. It wasn't, there weren't any close games until a four o'clock spot. But hopefully tonight we'll wrap up the week with some excitement before we get to those Thursday and Saturday games next week. For Jim Sauce, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the game tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.